I feel like for a funeral reception, that got a little bit out of control. Come on, it's great. Come on in. I'm okay. We're done playing. I promise. No, thanks. Do you want a beer? No, uh, thanks. I brought you one. Okay. <laughs> How many people are still in there? Down to about 40. 40. Just the hardcore partiers. <laughs> Is it Claire's friends? No. Mathematicians, your sister's friends left hours ago. The guys were really pleased to be asked to participate. They worshipped your dad. Hmm. It was Claire's idea. It was good. The performance of imaginary number was sort of moving. <laughs> <laughs> good funeral. Not good, I mean. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you believe how many people came? I was surprised. Hmm. I think you would have liked it. Sorry, it's, that's not my, my place. To... No, that's okay. Everything was better than I thought. You look great. Claire gave it to me. I like it. Oh. Bit. <laughs> no, Catherine, it's... When do you think they'll leave? No way to know. Mathematicians are insane. I went to this conference in Toronto last fall. I'm young, right? I'm I'm in shape. <laughs> Thought I could hang with the big boys. Uh-uh. Wrong. I've never been so exhausted in my life. 48 straight hours of partying, drinking, drugs, papers, lectures. Drugs. Yeah. Amphetamines, mostly. I mean, I don't, but... Some of the older guys are really hooked. Really? Yeah, they think they need it. Why? They think math's a young man's game. It's speed keeps him racing, makes him feel sharp. There's this fear that the creativity peaks at around 23, and it's all downhill from there. Once you hit 50, it's over. Might as well teach high school. what my father thought. I don't know. Some people stay prolific. Not many. No, you're right. Really original work. It's all young guys. Young guys. Young people. But it is men, mostly. There are some women. Who? There's a woman from Stanford, I think. Oh, I can't remember her name. Sophie Germain? Yeah? I've probably seen her at meetings, I just don't think I've met her. She was born in Paris in 1776. <laughs> so, I've definitely never met her. Mm. <sighs> She was trapped in her house during the French Revolution. Um, she had to stay inside for her safety, and she passed the time reading in her father's study. Later, she tried to get a real education, but the schools didn't allow women, so she wrote a letter. She wrote to Gauss. She used a man's name, um, Antoine Auguste Leblanc. <laughs> she sent him some important work involving a certain kind of prime number, and. He was thrilled to be corresponding with such a brilliant young man. Stupid. Sophie Germain, of course. Oh, you know her. Germain primes. They're famous. You double them and add one, you get another prime. Like two. Two is prime. Doubled plus one is five. That's a prime. Yes. 
or 92,305 times 2 to the power of 16,998 plus 1. Right. Uh, that's the biggest one? The biggest one, no. You ever find out who she was? Gauss? Yeah. Later, a mutual friend told him that the brilliant young man was a woman. He wrote to her. A taste for the mystery of numbers is excessively rare, but when a person of the sex, which, according to our customs and prejudices, must encounter infinitely more difficulties than a man, to familiarize herself with these thorny researches, succeeds nevertheless in penetrating even the most obscure parts of them, then without a doubt, she must have the noblest courage, extraordinary talent, and superior genius. I, I memorized it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm a little drunk. It's okay. Um, I'm I'm sorry about yesterday, about the work you're doing. I take as much time as I was pushy. I was off. No, I'm sorry no, about that. You were right. I I should not have called the police. It was my fault. No. <laughs> the point is, that book. I'm starting to think is the only lucid one, really, and there's no math in it. No. I mean, I'll keep reading, but if I don't find anything in a couple days, I. Back to the drums. Right. And your own research? Uh, such as it is. What's wrong with it? It's not exactly setting the world on fire. Oh, come on. It sucks, basically. Hair. My papers t get turned down. You know, for the right reasons. My stuff is trivial, the, the big ideas aren't there. Yeah, but it's not about the big ideas, it's about the work. You have to chip away at a problem. It's not what your dad did. I think it was, actually, in a way. He would sneak up on a question, attack it from the side, from some weird angle, grind away at it. I mean, he was slogging. He was just so much faster than everybody else that from the outside it looked absolutely magical. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Unless the work was beautiful. You could read it for pleasure. It was streamlined, no wasted moves, like a 95 mile an hour fastball. It was just elegant. Yeah. And that's what you can never duplicate. At least I can. It's okay. At a certain point, you realize it's not gonna happen and you readjust your expectations. I enjoy teaching. You might come up with something. 28, remember? On the downhill slope. <laughs> Have you tried speed? I heard that it helps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>